Have you ever tried to advise your sons or daughters about professional life, personal development or education? And in doing so, feeling that they were hopelessly outdated and irrelevant. As a father of a 17-year-old son, I felt I had to give him some advices about his choice of study. But when I got into this and uh, thought about it, I, I sort, you know, it just slowed down on me. It was so many things that has changed since I was a teenager, so how could I possibly offer him anything of relevance? So it was a great relief to me when we got this invitation from the school for a free session with the career advisor at the school. I mean, just the idea of getting some professional help uh, was really uplifting and welcome. So, of course, we accepted and we went down to the school and we stood there in the hallway in front of his door waiting for overturn. And um, I must admit that uh, this feeling of relief really got a severe hit back when I saw that huge flow diagram at his door panel. It was a, you know, body size flow diagram where you could see different arrows with universities, topics, all leading to a long range of different jobs you could choose. And most likely there is somebody out there who is very proud of this piece of work. But for me, it just suffocated my confidence totally. But we knocked on the door and we entered uh, the office of the advisor, sat down and we were ready to be enlightened. But two minutes into that conversation, it became very clear to me that we were really not a, fi a fine-tuned team untangling all the different options and making it clear for him what choices he should uh, choose. We were rather a group of two elderly men talking about the future, which we to a large extent would not be a part of. And then this guy, a modern youth, you know, my son, he has an excess of information and with that excess of information, he also get an excess of choices. And it, in his world, uh, there will be changes uh, happening so rapid and at a certain scale that these history books we, we write, they will uh, appear like slow, dull and foreseeable novels. And in his world, uh, the jobs he will desire, they are not even invented yet. So he, he just might have a career target to be a light speed explorer instead of a blacksmith, if you understand what I mean. And this career advisor, <clears throat> he had the heart uh, at his right place, but his mind in the wrong century. Because he tried to make clarity to a world that kept on uh, changing as we spoke. And the way he did this, he just added new and new routes and new options and new combination all the way. And how this mapped out in my son's brain, I don't know. But in my brain, it looked like this. So the flow diagram at the door now has transformed into a gigantic network of different routes, all leading from A to B. A lot of options. So in my head, a nightmare in terms of clarity. But the worst thing about it is that um, it uh, became less and less clear for me whether that route he was talking about actually was a safeguarding my son's um, relevance and success. So, and I felt this on myself as well during this conversation, because in the start I, had, uh, I offered a lot of comments and questions, you know, and uh, felt I had to, of course, being a responsible parent. But then I could hear myself slowing down until I came to a complete silence. And I, come to the point, I came to the point where I felt like this guy. I felt I was a dinosaur. You know, a kind of a dinosaur that's just been walking around for ages in my prehistoric forest. And it, it seemed to be a very long shot that any of my experience and know how could be relevant for his modern world. So after the session, we went back to the car and we headed back home again. And it was this sound of silence inside the car, very awkward. Uh, so I, I tried to raise the uh, level of energy a little bit and asked my son, you know, what did you get out of this uh, session? And he responded that, you know, besides nothing, he said, you know, uh, didn't give me anything. And this is frustrating because all my friends, they are uh, wondering about the same and they keep on asking what to do. And all we get is this advice so do's and don'ts in terms of professions. And most of these professions you talk about, they won't be there in 10 years, he said. So I didn't, I couldn't really get, you know, come with up with an answer or anything to continue on his response there. So we went back to back home in a complete silence in the car. So back home, I withdrew to my study and I thought, you know, I have two options now. I can uh, just 
forget it and hope for the best, or I could dig deeper. And uh, being a responsible parent, of course, I choose dig deeper. So I hit the rewind button on my life recorder and I traveled back in time. And then thinking about the fundamentals that have changed people I met to my education, through my career or personal life. And I found that there were actually two categories of people, the prosperous and stagnated, and the prosperous and thriving. And not measured or categorized whether they have reached a certain level of monetary uh, state but, or an organization hierarchy. No, no, no. Those that are thriving, those were the people that seem to be continue to develop themselves all, the through, all, uh, all through the whole life, really. Those that seem to spread energy around them rather than drain it from others. Those that always was offered a new option around the corner when things looked fairly dark. So those would be people you would love to have as colleagues and friends, I guess. And then it was this other group, the prosperous and stagnated. In there you could find people that maybe even made it to the top executive level. But for some reason they lost that inner drive. And with that they lost fewer and fewer, got fewer and fewer choices until they just diminished in relevance and slowed down and their energy just went out the window. So I took a red pen and a piece of paper and a green pen. And with the red pen, I took down all the commonalities I could think of for the prosperous and the stagnated. And the red and the green pen I used for those that were thriving. Adding more and more of these notes and um, I found, found out that it was not about schools or universities or smart career moves that I did. No, no, there was something more fundamental. And if you think about it, it makes sense because in the early generation, I think it was more likely than not that what the prior uh, generation had experienced would be relevant for the next. Hence, if you were advising your son or daughter about a uh, choice, uh, the likelihood of that advice to be sound and safe was fairly high. And I think it was easier to be specific as well. I mean, if you were a blacksmith and you advised your son to be a blacksmith, you couldn't do too much harm most likely. But today, the world is continuously disrupting. Uh, so your advice uh, to make that stay relevant it needs to be much more on the fundamental level. So you need to address what really ensures that your son or daughter remains happy and relevant. So I really got energy for this and I looked through all my notes and uh, I ended up with three advices I would like to offer my son. I, and through this process, I got out of my dinosaur skin and uh, I felt energized and uh, really a relevant father from this century. So I called my son being uh, motivated by the momentum I got. And he came up to my study, slipped into the sofa, and he had this body posture I sh I'm sure most of you know and reckon, where he tells you that, uh, you know, I'm already on my way back to whatever I was doing prior to you calling me, but please offer what you have to say, father. But as I started to offer my uh, sincere and heartfelt advices, his body language changed. We made eye contact uh, and uh, we swiftly got a good conversation going. And my first advice was uh, choose stimulating people and environment. And by that I mean you should always seek and invest in friends and uh, colleagues that pushes you further. But at the same time, they, you should also look for those that create an environment around you where it's safe to fail and succeed. He nodded, yeah. I reckon this because in our Taekwondo classes, we always push each other to improve our skills. But at the same time, we have this unwritten law not to laugh over each other when we fail. I felt this was a really good start and I was energized now to go further with my second advice. My second advice was Choose always the path that fuels your motivation. And I said to him, e even though you seem to be following that path that uh, is perfect for you, from time to time it will require that you take that extra mile and walk that extra mile. Then it's eminent that uh, whatever you are following is actually fueling your inner motivation or aligns with your beliefs. Okay, he said, uh, can you offer me an example of that? And I said, yeah, uh, if you, I want you to make sure that you follow a path so that when you woke, wake up every morning, you have a little smile on your face. 
not the contrary, that you wake up every morning just realizing that the batteries have been lowered further. And that makes sense, Dad, he said. I mean, it feels daunting to think about that my rest of my life would just be a task that only consumes my energy. Do you have more advices, he asked. Yes, I have a third one, and that's my last one. Choose a path that always adds new skills. Because you, you will experience a world where there are a lot of changes, and the best asset and job protection for you then would be the skill to acquire new know-how. And the way you do that is that you make sure that when you are presented for a new potential path, you always choose the path that forces you to develop new skills. It might be uncomfortable from time to time, but do so. It was this sudden silence. You could see that his brain was processing what was just told. But it's true that I, I, I believe you because uh, there are so many things uh, invented every day. So, so of course you need to keep on learning to stay relevant. But for me, he said, it's a little bit of a surprise that you grown-ups stop to learn new things. That will never happen to me. I will keep on learning new things until I'm 100 years old. He raised uh, with a nod of appreciation, which is a strong recognition from a kid that just grew taller than you, seemingly overnight. So I was delighted. You may feel free to use my three advices, uh, the stimulating people and environments, the path that fuels and motivation, and the path that adds new skills. But I want you not to fear to offer your own advices. You just need to dig deep enough to find out uh, that your experience and know of actually is universal in terms of time and space. So you are for sure not irrelevant and an outdated dinosaur. Thank you.